If we're going to be just like any other organization, just like any club or just like any other man-made group, we have missed the mark. And I must confess, uh, and I'm going to confess, I should have been more faithful to challenge us to be better. I should have shouted louder about the call to make sure we are better people. I apologize. I'm sorry that I did not constantly keep it in front of you to call to be more Christ-like in speech, attitude, and in action. But I'm going to make sure this year that I'm not derelict in my duties as a pastor so today I'm calling you to a higher level of love a higher level of caring a higher level of concern a higher level of commitment I am calling us not to treat each other like we are disposable but to treat each other like we're part of our own beloved body I am calling us to love our neighbor as ourselves Jesus said that ain't but two he didn't say eight but I'm adding that in he said it ain't but two commandments to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself but the mistake we make is that our love as people of God looks too much like the love that the world has see the love has a funny kind of love the world has a, a fickle some timey conditional love uh, that's not the love that God has called us to he has called us to have a love that will sacrifice a love that will go out on a limb a love that will put each other ahead of ourselves a love that is not easily offended, a love that looks beyond our faults and sees the need, a love that is not proud and arrogant, but a love that is driven by humility. See, that is a radical proposition, but that is the way of God. It only, And guess what? It only works if we all commit to doing it. It doesn't work if half of us are trying and the other half is content with having the same nasty self-centered attitude we had before we met God. It only works. I should have got an amen in that. That's all right. I'm going to keep on preaching. It only works if we all decide to become living sacrifices and offer ourselves to God every day to be used for his glory and to bless somebody besides ourselves. Oh, and that's what we find here in the book of Philippians. Uh, there's a call to go higher. There's a call to go deeper. There's a call to be better. The book of Philippians was a letter penned by the Apostle Paul to the, the saints of God in Philippi. That they, were, they were good church folk. They received the word gladly. They were growing in God. They were sharing their faith. They were seeking God. But even though they were good church folk, the apostle knows that they can be better saints of God. Can I say that again? They were good church folk, but guess what? Even good church folk can be better. They had grown, but there was more room to grow. They had matured, but there was room for more maturing. And you know what I have found? Sometimes it's the saints that's the saints that really struggle with being nice to one another are the saints that think they've already attained it this is the saints that think they don't need to grow it's the saints that think they already made it but can i give you a news flash can i let you in on something we can all grow a whole lot more we all can be a whole lot better none of us have achieved christ-like status all of us are pressing to the mark of the high calling none of us got it yet and that awareness that we are not all that, everybody say not all that, should be motivation to keep working on being nicer, kinder, gentler, more understanding, less harsh, and more loving. And see, it is with this in mind that the apostle feels the need to pen this letter to the church in Philippi. These are the words of a pastor that can sense the good church needs a reminder that there's still more growth. Uh, this, these are the words of a pastor that only wants the best for them and knows that the best only comes as they become more like Christ. Uh, his words in this text, uh, inspired by the Lord, have the same kind of concern that a parent has when they see a good child and know a good child can be better. And any good pastor wants more for you. Any good pastor only wants to see you soar in Christ. Any good pastor only wants to see you discover all that God has for you. And Paul, a good pastor, only wants, uh, uh, to, to, he only wants this church to truly experience uh, the transformation power that the Spirit can do in their lives. And so he writes this uh, with, with, with the love and compassion that only God can give you for somebody. And he, and he wants them to be better. 
And so when we get to verse 1 of chapter 2, the apostle uses four rhetorical statements that are not really questions, even though they are posed as questions, uh, but they are really rhetorical declarations of their new position in Christ. Uh, it says, uh, if any, if you have any encouragement, if you have any fellowship, if you have any comfort, if you have any tenderness or compassion, he says this if statement. Uh, and what he wants them to know is that they already have this in Christ. Uh, he's not not letting them in on something they don't know. He is reminding them of something they already should know. He is letting them know in Christ you have found encouragement that gives them eternal hope and joy. In Christ they've already found comfort. In Christ they've already found true fellowship with the Spirit of God. He isn't asking them if they found these things. He's saying you things. Uh, it's like asking your child who you just gave the allowance to, do you have any money for candy? You know they have money for candy. You're just reminding them what they already possess. And that is what the Apostle Paul wants to know. you already been blessed. Uh, you already been redeemed. you already been lifted up. You, God has already worked it out for you. God has done miracles for you. God has already delivered a whole bunch of y'all. You've seen God work out. You've seen God bless you. You've seen God turn around. You've seen God change. Some of y'all were broken, busted, and disgusted, but look how encouraged you are right now. Some of you didn't know what you were going to do, and look what God has done for you. Paul said, if you found any, now he knows they got a whole lot, but he plays it like that. He knows they've been blessed. Paul and Silas were in Philippi, in jail, locked up on trumped up charges when the spirit of the Lord shook the jail and broke the jail door. They were in Philippi when they delivered that girl from a demon on the street. So he's not telling them, do you know if you benefited from knowing Christ? He knows that they have benefited from knowing the Lord. 